Okay, we've been talking about emotional intelligence and we say we have three minds, three essence to our brain. We have the cognitive mind, the emotional mind, and the wise mind, which is the marriage between the cognitive and the emotional mind. So most people would agree that it is wise to think before you act because thinking is a rational process that improves our ability to behave effectively. But at times, of course, we're going to experience these strong, almost automatic emotions that make clear thinking difficult and and they block our constructive or our productive behavior. So emotions certainly are different from thoughts because emotions lead to actions. And without this intelligent self-direction and monitoring, our emotions alone lead to habits of reactivity. So do keep in mind that passion, right? The heart, what we think of as the heart, dominates reason or the mind when feelings are intense. And that's why we need to step in and allow our wise brain to have the marriage between the thinking and the emotional mind. So now we get to the point of why emotional intelligence? Why are we talking about this concept in this learning frameworks class? Well, EI allows us to self-direct these impulsive behaviors that we have in a self-valued direction. And this is actually called intentionality. It means changing that emotional reactivity into a kind of self-valued be a self-valued behavior. So to be emotionally intelligent means that we are able to use our four basic emotions that we talked about and all of their derivatives in smart ways to help ourselves be better people, to get along, to work with others, and also to have a life that makes us feel positive and joyful. So this is called intentionality and using emotional intelligence. Okay, so up to this point, we've talked about emo what emotions are, what they do for us, where they come from. So now the second part of this process is we need to understand um, how, how we can become more emotionally intelligent. Well, to do that, we need to take an assessment. And the assessment we're going to take in this class is called, as you see at the top of the screen, an emotional skills assessment. Okay, and you're going to generate a profile. So this assessment is like a test, like all the assessments that we've been taking, but there's no grade obviously and you're going to answer questions about yourself and then you're going to take the the numbered answers to make kind of a profile or a chart about how you work in 13 different skill areas and you can see the skill areas on the screen so basically this assessment is going to me measure your current skill areas in um, kind of some different categories so first of all, we have interpersonal skills like assertion. We have leadership skills, and you can see those are comfort, empathy, decision-making, and leadership. We also have what are called self-management skills, which are drive strength, time management, and commitment ethic. And we have what are called intrapersonal skills of self-esteem and stress management. These are all the positive skills. We also have potential problem areas, and you can see them on there. Aggression, um, you want to avoid that. Instead, you want to focus on the word assertion. Um, also, you, the potential problem area Area is deference you want to avoid that and then again instead focus on assertion aggression basically means that you you on the attack and deference means that you're very passive and in um, wishy-washy I guess I would say and assertive is like the sweet spot it's just right okay another potential problem area is something called change orientation and so one of your assignments is in your um, uh, activities, you're going to be doing this assessment. Please make sure that you actually read the descriptions of all of these terms to make sure that you understand what they mean. So while all of these 13 skill areas are important and they are important to be emotionally intelligent, you know, to be using your wise mind, the five that I have underlined, let's go over them, assertion, you know, standing up for your rights in a calm, orderly manner. Drive strengths, which is essentially motivation. Time management, we know what that is. Commitment ethic, following through um, with your plans and your goals. And stress management, those five are the best predictors of success, whether it's academic success, 
career professional success and life success. So if you have a good handle on these five, you're going to be doing really well in life. If you have a handle on all 13, even better. But what if we don't? What if when we take this assessment and we see our profile, we're struggling in some of the 13 areas, we're struggling in some of the top five, then it's awareness, right? It's self-awareness. And what we need to do is we need to develop some strategies to start working on improving those areas, um, all of the 13, but especially the five that are underlined. So again, we know what emotions are. We know the power that they have, and we know that we need to channel these emotions through our logical cognitive mind to use our wise mind. So part of that process is understanding when we have triggers, when we procrastinate, when we don't have motivation, when we don't handle pressure well, when we don't follow through with things, when we give in to instant gratification, when we recognize those problem areas, when we see them um, concretely, for example, on a profile, we can then say, okay, this, this is really something that's a bugaboo for me. And now what can I do to start working on it? So it doesn't compromise me in my academics. It doesn't lead to future problems in my career or in my relationships. And so together we can then identify some strategies where we can start tackling these these problems, these potential problem areas, and to build a better version of ourselves in our um, in our in our own lives, but also in our relationships with other people, which is the whole part um, of being an emotionally intelligent human being.